What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis and the truth about what is happening here and everything. Yeah, it's it's getting bad here. Inflation is getting insane. The country is just really trying to struggle through this. And we're seeing price gouging here from everything, from gas, from food to pretty much everything here as corporations are just trying to get away with everything. And uh, we'll be covering that here in this video. Also, President Biden, as you can see here, President Biden is preparing to take action to reshape former President Donald Trump's tariffs on China, which has now been there for a while, been there for a while. The administration is likely to announce action to lift a narrow set of tariffs on Chinese imports this month. Yeah, now here's how this works. Is that when, um, I know this because I have a business where I sell products on Amazon. And so I actually have very good knowledge on this. Is that um, when someone, when a manufacturer or a company buys products and ships them in from China, which millions of companies do, they buy them from China. The reason for this is not because they want to buy them from China, but it's just economics 101 is because they're cheaper, okay? So if you want to buy a pair of shoes and sell them here in the U.S., let's say you're Nike Corporation, that pair of shoes to be made, let's just say that they to get them made in China the cost might cost $10, okay? And to ship them might cost $15 uh, $5 for a total of $15. I'm just I'm just picking numbers here out of out of the blue here. But to have a made in the US could cost $30 because labor here and, and is just way more expensive. I mean you're looking at $15 an hour minimum wage at a lot of places um, and uh, factory jobs here in the U.S., they, they, they just pay a lot more. I mean, you, factory jobs really don't pay minimum wage. Uh, they're, they're mostly higher, higher wages, you know, so uh, higher than minimum wage at least. So um, th those are the type of average roundabout prices that you could expect. So that it and if the other problem here is that when you go to try to find something manufactured in the US a lot of times if you're looking for a specific product like let's say a fidget spinner remember when fidget spinners were the uh were all the rave and and I'm just using this as, a, as an example um a lot of times you can't find a, a manufacturer to get your product made in the US so if you're just looking for like a a specific coffee cup. Let's say you want to have a specific coffee cup made. You can go to uh, companies in, in China and already find companies in China that are already making them. You can just get them made right away and they'll literally have it done for you in a week. Where if you want to go and find a specific, that specific coffee cup being made in the US, a lot of times you can't even find it. You can't even find it. Okay. And, um, that's the problem because trust me, having it made in the U.S. would be way easier. You wouldn't have to have it shipped all the way over from China. Trust me, that's a nightmare. And having it made in the U.S. is you could literally put made in the USA. It's it's nice to have. People would buy it more. Trust me, it'd be a lot easier. But unfortunately, it's it's oftentimes double the price or more. And when you're double the price, you have to raise your cost. You have to raise your cost because if your cost of goods is $30 as opposed to $15, you, you just can't compete. You just can't compete on the shelves because you're just, your, your actual cost is more. It's just impossible. It's impossible. So, um, you know, and especially when we're talking about like low cost things, like, you know, something that costs a dollar to make or $2 to make, and, and then they actually sell it for $3. Well, if your cost in the U.S. is three dollars, and and you know they're selling on the shelf for three dollars, you you just can't even compete. Like having it made in the U.S. isn't even an option. And unfortunately, this is the reality of a lot of things. And and I'm not choosing sides here. Trust me, I'm from the U.S. 
but this is the reason why um, a lot of things are manufactured overseas. And if you want to ever understand this a little bit better, go down the aisle of Walmart, go down the aisle of CVS or Walgreens or your local store, not food, not perishable food, but, uh, you know, the, the plastic aisle or the toy aisle or the soap aisle or anything like that. And just, you know, pick 10 random items, 20 random items, turn them around and see where they're made by completely different manufacturers, you know, and just see where they're made. Chances are they're not made in the USA. And that's just, and we're talking about completely random companies. And this is not by mistake. It's not that these companies don't want to have it made in the US. It's just that having it made in the US would double the cost. And if everything doubled the cost, I mean, you're thinking about right now how high grocery costs are, right? So let's say you go to the grocery store and you spend a hundred bucks and, and everybody's complaining about high grocery costs are now. Imagine if everything doubled if everything was forced to be made in the U.S. or everything was made in the U.S., imagine if it was double the price of it now. So I know everybody says, oh, we should make everything here in the U.S., we should make everything here in the U.S., but if everything doubled in cost, <laughs> well, that would be uh, <laughs> that would be a different story, right? But as you can see here, President Biden is preparing to, to take action to remove some of the Trump tariffs on China. What this would potentially do is remove some of the cost on manufacturers, okay? Because what this did is this added a tariff or a tax onto manufacturers. So let's say you were getting a pair of shoes or a coffee cup or a mop made in China. The manufacturer had to pay for it. The, the Chinese didn't pay for it. The, the, the company manufacturing it, whether it's a small business a medium business or a large business, it didn't matter. It added the price onto the goods and the manufacturer, the company, the, the person, whoever, you know, whether it's a small business like, like me, just, you know, ordering a hundred of them or a thousand of them, or if it's Nike, ordering 10,000 or a hundred thousand or a million of them and, and ultimately selling it to you, the consumer, it, the consumer ends up paying for it believe it or not, okay? Because what happens if, is if that tariff added a dollar onto each unit, each product, you ultimately end up paying for it. Now, Trump's idea, former President Donald Trump, trying to look at this from a, a, a neutral point of view here, Trump's thought was that ultimately people might try to manufacture more stuff at home. Because, uh, you know, tariffs are not a new thing. They happen all around the world, not just here in the U.S., not just in China. Other countries do it as well. Uh, it's a way to uh, generate income for the country, and it's also a way to uh, make things more fair, and it's also a way to um, regulate things, and it's also a way to try to bring manufacturing back at home. Okay, so this is it's something that's gone on for for years, but it also raises the cost of things. It also raises the cost thing. And, and the tariffs that Trump put in were on a lot of products, thousands and thousands and thousands of them. Okay. So um, they've been in place now for like a, the, the additional tariffs because there's been tariffs on many things. And now there's much, much more. If they remove them, it would potentially or will uh, lower the cost of a lot of goods because what, what will happen is if you start removing tariffs on or taxes on thousands, thousands of items, then they could basically lower their prices. And in a free market, what will happen is if, um, if the price of mops and the price of coffee cups and the price of shoes and the price of anything you buy on say Amazon or Walmart or anywhere you go shopping, um, what will happen is every single mop, all the manufacturers that make mops are going to now be paying a dollar less per unit because they're not going to have to pay that dollar tax. So every single mop manufacturer is going to now be paying a dollar less. Now, every single mop manufacturer won't pass on the cost of the manufacturer, but some will. Let's say 50% of them do and 50% of them don't. 50% of them are like, well, we're going to try to keep that profit for ourselves, the small business owner or the large business owner. But 50% of them are saying, you know what? 
we're going to use that to our advantage. We're not going to keep the profit, but we're going to lower our price so that people will see our prices lower and they'll buy our mop instead of the other mop that's a dollar more. Because who's kidding who? When you go to the shelf and you see one mop for $9.99 and you see one mop for $8.99 and they both look similar, then one doesn't have a distinct advantage over the other. Which one are you going to buy? You may buy the one that's a dollar less if they both look the same and one doesn't have one doesn't look better than the other. And that's why you might say, oh, well, Jimmy, they're not going to lower their prices. But you got to remember that people don't always buy the you know, people a lot of times buy the cheaper one if they look the same. Sometimes will people people will buy the, the more expensive one if they look if it looks like it's worth it. But if it doesn't look like it's worth it, if they look the same. Most people will buy the cheaper one because it's, they look the same. So there's where a, a small business can actually make more money by passing the cost on to the consumer. So there is why um, President Biden is probably going to be lowering or getting rid of the tariffs on a lot of products going forward. And, and a lot of people have been pushing Biden to do this. And this is where you see different ideologies from different presidents. And I mean, you can let me know. I mean, it's not necessarily that one is right and one is wrong. They both have good merits. They both have good morals. And honestly, I could sit here on a debate team and I could say, I could give you the the goods and the bads about either one of them. You know, because one promotes bringing manufacturing back at home and one promotes, you know, Americanism and manufacture here at home and stuff like that. Um, but it only works so much because... When you go and look at the products in the aisle, you're still going to see the the majority of them manufactured in China and other things. So even though the majority of them are still manufactured in China, those prices are all raised and it's costing Americans more money because those all have additional tariffs on them or a lot of them do. We, you know, it's hard to really tell because you'd have to look up each one and Ask the manufacturer if they're paying additional tariffs. It's you know it's really hard to do that, and you probably would never know. But let's just say a majority of them are paying more tariffs. So if they are paying more tariffs, it's actually costing a lot of people more money. And if it's costing people more money, and if, and if we could get rid of them, the question is, do we? Would we want to lower people's grocery bills, but maybe take away that incentive to promote? manufacturing here at home it's it's hard to gauge how much that works it, it's really it's a tough thing to do you let me know your thoughts here in the comments would you keep the tariffs would you get rid of the tariffs you know it's uh it's really it's it's a tough thing um you know and, and try not to think about it if you're democrat or republican just try to think about it from a neutral point of view Think about it with your grocery bill. Think about it as you know manufacturing here at the home. Think about it if if you were a company, what would you do? And 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 think about it with your grocery bill, just as a realistic point of view. And do you think this will help you? Do you think this will hurt you? And that's um. And, and you also got to kind of think of, you know, have they worked? You know, it's been a couple years since they've been put in place. Do you think that the Trump tariffs have worked or not? You know, and again, a lot of people are going to have different thoughts, different point of views on this. The other thing to consider here, so as you can see here, right from Forbes, inflation may get worse this summer and could linger for many years, experts warn. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is tough. And then you can see here my, my other one here. I covered this here. Um, you can see it from Business Insider. Every country around the world is trying to tackle inflation. It's not working anywhere. And, uh, you know, inflation is is literally at near, you know, 30, 40 year highs in pretty much almost every country. Um, look at this headline here from Turkey. Um, inflation soars to nearly 80 percent. In Turkey, the country Turkey, not, not the food Turkey or not the animal Turkey, um, as food prices double in Turkey. Now, remember, our recent inflation uh, rate was 8.6% uh, 
um, in May. We'll be having our June numbers here come soon. But imagine if 8.6% in the U.S. Imagine if our inflation rate was 80%. 80%, which is what it is in Turkey. Their food prices have doubled. Yeah, so, I mean, how, did they, how are they even surviving it, over there in Turkey? That's just absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, we thought inflation was bad at 8%. Imagine 80%. And part of the problem here with food is corporate greed. We're seeing this with food companies and with oil companies and large corporations are seeing this as a time to kind of exploit us because inflation, they're using it as, a, um, as an excuse to raise prices. Uh, here, check this out. You'll, you'll find this interesting. Companies like Tyson Foods are picking your pocket in broad daylight. If you don't believe me? Check out what their quarterly earnings reports say about rising prices. We will remain disciplined in our pricing initiatives to ensure additional inflationary pressures are passed through to customers. You hear that? They're talking about you. Now, they actually changed the wording on that sentence in their most recent report, swapping our passed through to customers to are mitigated by sales price increases. A bit sneaky, wouldn't you say? While companies like Tyson may complain about rising costs, they're passing all of the pain onto you, the customer, and they're hoping you won't notice that they're using inflation as an excuse to fatten their profit margins too. How is this possible? Well, Tyson operates in a concentrated industry. It's just one of four companies that dominate the pork, beef, and poultry markets. This corporate concentration is no accident. It's a strategy enabled by decades of successful corporate lobbying for weak antitrust enforcement. For years, companies like Tyson have used their market power to gobble up smaller competitors left and right, concentrating their power at every level of the production process. Tyson once outlined their corporate ethos plainly, segment, concentrate, dominate. The company later trademarked that phrase, by the way. Look, if markets were truly competitive, companies like Tyson would keep their prices down and profit margins slimmer in order to prevent competitors from grabbing away customers. But they aren't, and they don't. This structural problem can be fixed by only one thing, a genuine revival of antitrust enforcement and a crackdown on corporate concentration. Yeah, and we're seeing this in industry after industry after industry right now. Uh, Exxon Mobil, uh, Exxon Oil, says rising oil and gas prices will net it a quarter two windfall profit of at least $2.5 billion in just quarter two alone. As gas prices are just ravaging the nation here, they're making more profit than ever. Yeah, Exxon Mobil signaled that skyrocketing margins from fuel and crude sales could generate a record quarterly profit. According to a securities filing, energy prices have shot up this year with oil selling for more than $105 a barrel and gasoline at around $5 per gallon in the U.S. And get this, in the first quarter, Exxon posted an $8.8 billion profit, excluding a Russia write-down from when they pulled out of Russia and basically just left their assets there because <laughs> uh, they just bailed on Russia and decided it wasn't worth the risk. Also, President Biden's administration on Friday proposed up to 10 oil and gas lease sales in the Gulf of Mexico and one off the Alaska coast over the next five years, going against the Democrats' climate promises but scaling back a Trump era plan that called for dozens of offshore drilling opportunities, including in undeveloped areas. Interior Secretary Deb Holland said fewer than 11 lease sales or even no lease sales at all could occur, with a final decision not due for months. The other problem is, is that these large oil companies have so many leases of land that they don't use. They lease them and sit on them. Yeah. So, yeah. 
The other problem is, is that they don't want to increase production. They've only increased it very, very slightly. And um, in fact, we had a recent congressman say that oil production was actually down below uh, 2018 or 2019 levels. Um, and they just don't want to increase production because they're just raking in the cash. And if they increase production too much, uh, it will actually lower the price uh, per barrel and uh, per gallon. And uh, if they lower the price too much, even though their supply, they'll be selling more barrels, it will actually offset the price per barrel or the price per gallon. And uh, then that will go down. So they know exactly what they're doing. And they're purposely, purposely not increasing the supply, these oil and gas companies. Because remember, they're not just in the U.S. They're global companies. They sell in in you know, dozens and dozens of countries around the world. So they know exactly what they're doing. Uh, they're purposely keeping the price of gas and oil high so that they can keep their profits high. Yeah. Remember, they're, they're not just U.S. companies. It's not just a U.S. thing. The price of oil is a global thing. You know, so don't think that they're just, uh, they're just uh, solely, uh, you know, patriots to the U.S., and the U.S. gas, because because they're not, you know, BP, Shell, Exxon, and you know all the all these different c corporations, they sell all around the world. They're they're they don't care whose money they're taking. They're taking everybody's money, well except for Russia. They pulled out of there because of the political turmoil and the risk. Um, but uh, they're they're taking everybody's money. Their money is money to them. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so, and I'll let you know the truth of what's going on here. So you can click here to see my newest video of multiple states that are sending out stimulus checks, some actually going out this week. Or you can click this video here to see what Nancy Pelosi just did, which was crazy. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.